We're here in uh, MotorX 2015 in Sydney, Australia. George, welcome to Australia. Oh, and how have you, you enjoyed your trip so far? So far, it's just been fantastic. I mean, I have to tell you, when I walked in that show yesterday, and I walked through their doors, and I seen those beautiful cars, the workmanship, the construction, the color schemes, the things that are being done here, uh, we had to pioneer years ago, and you uh, here are just putting everything together in, in combinations of workmanship and quality and ideas and things that are just absolutely, and you, you fill the buildings. Yes. I mean, it is something that we don't even, uh, I mean, even the Grand National Show that we have is the number one show in USA and California, I mean, they don't even compare with, to what, what you're doing. Oh, that's, that's, that's I mean, <laughs> We're also here with uh, Dale Fisher, a uh, legend of Aussie customising. Uh, Dale, what, what's it like for you meeting George Barris who inspired you? Well, he was the one that inspired me back in early 1950. Uh, and I used to drool over him and his brother Sam's uh, efforts in America. But of course, there was nobody interested in that sort of thing here. So I used to have to customise my own car and then park it out the front so that it would hopefully attract other people and gradually over time build up enough people to be interested and create it. And of course uh, we were limited a bit in Australia with what we could do and you used to be uh, very jealous of what George oh, would get away with. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to me to hear that like when I wanted to colour blend or do anything I could pull a fender, I can put on anything else on there, I could weld it on there, I could lead, make it flow together, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, were you able to do that yes, at the beginning? Yes, yes. They allowed it oh, in. but I wasn't ne necessarily I'm, I'm, allowed to. Yeah. That's why I had to keep it uh, uh, subdued. I couldn't do anything dramatic or uh, uh, like some of the later cars. It wasn't until the 70s and 80s that that happened here in Australia. Oh, I see. Because I was able to do it right off the bat. Yeah, well, I wasn't. Uh, I, I could. So I could you used to actually work on the cars a, a lot, you know, chop, I've seen photos of you chopping roofs and grinding on fenders and things like that. When did you move away from that and do more of the promotional stuff than photography? Yeah, we, we, I, I, was, I had the right to do whatever I want. I'd go out and get a, uh, go out into a field and get a tractor and take the parts off of the tractor. I'd come back over and put it on a car. So if I liked the way that tractor fenders were done, or the lights were done, or something like that, I or the windshield frame and put the glass in it, I just did it. Yeah. And uh, it made a lot of difference because we didn't have to go through all of the restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we were in a, in a lot more of a breezeway and had more fun and more yeah. enjoyment. Yeah. And the crew can do it. You could. You didn't yeah. need a a special permit. Yeah. The only permit that I, I had that all my men that worked for me, they had to show that they had the quality of doing customizing. Yeah. It's just not getting a car that's got a big dent in it and beat yeah. it out. Yeah. And it you, had to be where you could make full fadeaways. Yeah. And uh, that was how things started when I was in Sacramento, when I was still going to school. Harry Westergaard, he was the man that was making full fadeaways. Yeah. Nobody made anything like that. Yeah. I was taking and changing taillights and headlights and everything like that. So I got so involved in doing that, I started out taking the knobs off of my mother's kitchen doors, <laughs> and I used those in the grills. Yeah. And I'm going to photo so, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> It was uh, uh, enjoyable to be able to do what you wanted to do. And uh, the only problem I had is when I went to school, I wanted to learn automobiles. No, we don't do automobiles. We want you to do cook cooking. I said, I quit. <laughs> and we, uh, the only thing I would even go to school was just to, to do athletic sports. Yes. Sports and playing football and track and yes. things like that. And then I'd go and go down to the boneyard and start playing with cutting yeah. the fenders and everything. Yeah. And you had some real legends of customising work at the shop, you know, people like Junior Conway who was just a young kid when he came to see you and, and many others. Yeah, Junior Conway, when he came to me, uh, I was in Linwood and he come up and I says, okay kid, 
get over there on that 32 Ford and start working on that fender. Let me see what you can do. And he starts to say, oh, you got the potential. Let's go for it. Come on, we'll come over. Now let's make it and flare it. Oh, now even today, yeah, Junior Conway, he's, he's into the big figures of customizing cars. And the only time he'll come out is at the Pebble Beach. Yeah. Like this year is a big year for us. Yeah. We have the Mercury's are going to be on the grass. Yes. My Hero Hata Mercury, my, my, my brother's cars. Yeah. It is a thrill that we are finally getting recognized by Pebble Beach. Yeah. And we don't have to have Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Quintashes and everything. Yeah. We had what we wanted to put out. And yeah. it's going to be quite interesting when we yeah. get back with putting a bunch of Mercs together. Yeah. Things like that, so the uh, it's going to be a yeah. Because you're originally from Sacramento, which is up uh, near San Francisco, but you know you, you're famous for Southern California. But there's a lot going on in Northern California as well. well uh, Northern California was really the start, and then we would dwindle down towards Ho Hollywood or Los Angeles, because uh, as we went down and through the different cities, they uh, it gave us permits to do what we wanted to do. But the permits only limited repairs. If you had a dent in the fender or to get things like that, that was okay. But you didn't need a permit to make a fadeaway or a chop top. Or, you know, uh, we just went ahead and did it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'd come up. We, my brother went in and he bought a Mercury. Uh, he bought a Mercury at a Ford dealer. We brought it over. Brought it. as soon as we brought it over, all the guys got out there and pulled the do doors off and started whacking away and chopping the top and and not even talking to anybody. Nobody come in to say you're not allowed to do that. We were sectioning cars and getting them on the ground and putting yeah. full fadeaways and flares and, and everything. Yeah, and of course they were brand new cars back then, so you didn't have to worry about rust repairs or restoring the car before you yeah. modified it. Not all of these days, very, very little, very, very, very little. The only time we would do that is if you didn't have the money to go buy a new one and you got one from a junkyard, yeah. then you would have to uh, do accordingly if it was in a junkyard and some of the fenders rusted out or something like that, then you would take another car that was there that didn't have that rusted fender, whack it off and put it back on the other one. Now you you are well known for your photography as well. So um, you, and you didn't only just promote your own stuff, but you travelled around the country going to shows and other like Alexander Brothers and and really grew customising through your photography, which is is still stunning to this day. Yeah, it seems that uh, the publications and all the different magazines and newspapers liked me as the information because they knew I knew cars. They knew I knew what to do. They knew that I could say, hey, I got a fadeaway, I got a, a, a Cadillac fan, I got dual headlights and stuff like that. Oh, where did I come from? Where did I come from? I says, well, I did some of my cars. And Junior Conway, he's now doing this on that car. Junior Conway, now he's into uh, eight figures and ten figures in company doing cars. He wants to maybe just do one car uh, for Pebble Beach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it's uh, become a more uh, authentic, more uh, fashionable, more uh, pleasing to make a bigger living and the more uh, money that you can make. Yeah. So he was just a, a hot rodder that done good, basically. <laughs> yeah, it was. That's it was. A, 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 it was a, a, a lot of fun to uh, get into it and, and go in and do it. The only time we would. Uh, uh, the only time you would get any uh, backlash, like I would take a, my Buick and put out full fadeaways, yeah. and we'd drive into the driveway and come in there, and uh, guy come in, I, hey, where'd you, where'd you get those fadeaways? I, said, I made those fadeaways. You know, we don't want you to put them back. I start to kick in the fender, and I got to go over and punch them. <laughs> we had to fight our way through, but it was between our guys, see, and uh, yeah, my... Yeah. The, the, the 1950s, it was an amazing period of growth and popularity for the for the custom cars, and you and you built so many amazing cars. Do you have a favorite out of all the ones you did? Uh, not really, because each one was a different category. Whether it's a, a Deuce Roadster, whether it's a, a, a Chop Mercury, or whether it's a, a, a Ford made into a 
dual pa package or full, you know, it was, everything was different, see, because yeah. I started out, I don't know if I told you or not, I started out where I took the knobs off of my mother's kitchen yeah. Yeah. to make it for a grill. Yeah. Yeah. So I had grill bullets into the cavity of the grill. Yeah. And uh, same way with the 32 Ford. I made the 32 Ford yeah. and I used the word custom with a K. Yeah. Now, bang! I wish I would have taken that word custom with a K and trademark it. <laughs> I'd be a millionaire today because everybody is doing that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. now it's, it's open, open threads. Yeah. Now, one, one car you're very uh, famous for is the, the Golden Sahara, which was your car, which was wrecked in an accident, and, and by the sound of it, you're lucky you survived, but you then went looking for someone to, to create this amazing uh, custom with a, a, a Richard Street, wasn't it, with a Golden Sahara? Yeah, yeah, it's too bad that Richard Street is not letting us have the car. We use it in a, a, a movie, and uh, it was a, a, the prize custom car ever ever done and ever on will. TV shows and it was amazing. And, uh, uh, he went ahead and took it back east and puts it in the garage and nobody gets to see it, nobody gets to do this and, and uh, yeah. because it was one of the top cars was others. We did more different yeah. projects on the car than any other car, any yeah. other customer. Most of the other, Harry Westergaard was the only one that was making full fadeaways when we were making half fenders and things like that. So we'd go to Westergaard and get the, the metal and we'd make the full fadeaways, go up in the upper part, go to the lower part, make a, a roll, whatever way we would decide. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a lot of it had to be through your mind or, or you were sketching it or you, you take tape and you're laying it out on the different cars to, to get what design you would like. So that, uh, I have seen, uh, yeah, you, you actually designed a lot of the custom cars, so did you actually sketch like concept drawings, or like you said, it was kind of worked out on the car? How did that come about? Well, many times we sketched it, yes. In fact, my, my wife Shirley and I, we would do it together. We'd spend the night doing it, and we'd run down to Peterson and run into the office and have a make reprints and run it in through the magazine. But then it got to the point where we were uh, enjoying it by doing what we wanted to do, whatever we wanted to do, and uh, we'd cut and paste and, and, and chop up things and use different cans, food cans, to make a grill. Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> like I said, around, I yeah. took the knobs off my mother's uh, kitchen and used that in the grill and the back yeah, end. And whatever you had, whatever would work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, now, think, think outside the square and, yeah. and think of things that other people hadn't thought of to yeah. make it individual and stand out as something different. Yes, that was yes, the, yes. the problem. We yeah. used to uh, make metal shapes. Hmm. We were not able to make it. was really, very really hard to, because when they had a hand dolly and hammer it, it was really hard until they brought that English roller in. I was the first one to get one of those English rollers. Yeah. So I was able to get that thing and then I pressed the thing and I really start shaping it and going on and that was that was really a big thrill because we could make different forms yeah. of the cars without banging away on it and ended up with it. And, and you weren't limited with what was available you could just your imagination was the only thing that limited you in that respect I right, guess. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now you, you got involved with doing movie cars you're just just as famous for all the uh, TV and movie cars that you've done when did that really start was it more towards the late 50s and 60s? It was mostly into the late 50s because the movies industry finally realized that we could make cars that was very appealable to the audience, like Batman came through in 63, and uh, I was taking a, a regular car and customizing it, and all of a sudden they got out and Burt Ward driving down there, and the producer said, oh, that's it, that's it, let's go for it. So uh, we found it to be very, uh, then that Bob Hope would come in, we'd do Bob Hope and, and, and uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, <laughs> Frank Sinatra, he, Frank Sinatra brings his car in one morning and he says, George, I don't like people looking at me when I'm driving to the studio, he says, you know, I says, but you, 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 you know, if Frank Sinatra says, 
you, I, I want you to black out the windows. Yeah. You got you black them out. <laughs> Next morning he comes driving in and says, you know, George, you were right. I couldn't see an effing thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and was it also a bit of a case of, um, you know, with, with the 40s and 50s cars, you you know, the, the techniques to customise them were, were similar in a way, you know, towards the late 50s and 60s, did the, you know, the, the styling of the cars change? I mean, the factories almost started doing custom cars, so did it not leave as much for you to do? Well, we uh, were very fortunate. I, I was working with Chuck Jordan with uh, General Motors when he was with Cadillac. So we worked together and he, he used to come out to California a lot. I'd go back there a lot. I'd tour the Ford Custom Car Caravan and tour all over the, around the world with them and made the different cars that we could use that Ford was enjoying because we, we, there was no restriction. Yeah. I could do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, when they were with Ford Motor Company, there was a restriction. Yeah. And uh, so we were able to get a lot of the designers and the people that were doing things but we still had to ha do our hand forming yeah. because they weren't used to taking an air a hammer, an air hammer, and yeah. start shaping anything because yeah. they didn't have any use for it. And what for? Because yeah. what do they want? A, yeah. a set of fadeaway fenders for what? Yeah. 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 So yeah, in the 60s, the, the hot rods became much more popular as well. So it was it a bit of a decline with the you know traditional customizing oh, as well? Oh yeah, I mean I got photos, I got shelves with different photos, uh, visions of the different things we could do that, boom, Ford Motor Company would jump on, boom, Cadillac would jump on it. Mm. Uh, everybody would get onto it, because we had the freedom to do what we want. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, the only time we get any restrictions is when, uh, well, I, I put, like I said, the LED lights in the middle of, of the rear window uh, of a Lincoln, yeah. so that, boom, they right away they were able to say that, when you apply the brakes, the LED lights go on, yeah. and that means that uh, you have the freedom, and but you do know the other car is applying its brakes. Yeah. So we brought in a lot of features as well as... Yeah. And now the, every car has one of those. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, you've seen uh, David Scott's uh, uh, tribute to Dragula uh, over there, which is an amazing uh, creation, but what do you think of people you know, recreating stuff that you were doing 50 or 60 years ago. Is it flattering or do you think these people are, are crazy? <laughs> it's a little bit different. Yeah. Now for me to make the dragon, I wanted a coffin. I had to go into the mortuary <laughs> and I'd come in with a slip of paper, you know, with the things in it and I'd turn the guy around and I'd say, look at this, we, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's, oh yeah, yeah, well, well, you know, we can't sell, you know, think you can't do this, can't do it. My guys would pick up the casket and walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> because you couldn't get a casket unless you had a death certificate or something, oh, apparently. Yeah, was yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we yeah. had to go through more different ways of getting things done and yep. getting things formed and getting metal to, uh, you know, we didn't have an English roller, we didn't have an air hammer, we didn't have any of that. Yeah. So we had to cut and paste. Yeah. But is it flattering that people are still building cars, you know, modern cars or, or modern interpretations of the, the customs that you built back in the 50s? Do you think, what do you it's, think of that? It's become more and more, more and more now because now it's a collectible. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can do now that wasn't done then and to see the improvement to on the car, it just it absolutely excites you because you can see, well, you can see the Junior Conway, look what he's done to that car now. Mm. When he used to work for me, yeah. he was a 16-year-old boy, then he was, he was happy to be able to weld a bullet hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and did you think, you know, 50 or 60 years ago that in 50 or 60 years time we'd still be driving around in 49 Fords and, and uh, customising those cars? Well, it was seemed like we were bending that way, but then we got Detroit very involved with us. Ford, you know, General Motors, all, all the top designers, like Chuck Jordan, all those guys, they were on our on our, our on us with and that and to help us so they would uh, mm -hmm. do things like uh, on, a, on a new car they would work on it they would see that we made full fadeaways or we made half fadeaways and come it back and it was terrific like 
big thrill that we're getting right now, as this is the first time in history that uh, Pebble Beach is going to bring in the Mercury's. Yep, yep. And that's the Hirohata Mercury's and all these we're going to have them on display mm. in the middle of all these beautiful Rolls Royces and Bentleys and all yes, yes. Here we got a Ford or whatever it is and it's going to yeah. be it's going to be kind of exciting yeah. for us. But did, did you think in the 1950s that by 2015 we'd be all in flying cars or hover cars at least? <laughs> well, not we, we didn't think about it. I, I enjoyed it because anything that would trend to go off in a different way, yeah. I'd do it like when we made the car that went into the moon. Yeah. I mean, right away, I made it where the wheels and the tires and everything, I, they, 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 these six guys that went to the moon, they said, well, why are you doing this? I said, because the moon is not like streets where it's smooth and neat. You gotta go over and bumps and rolls that. I gotta have the fenders come up and down and clear so that you can go and still look pretty. pretty. Yeah, so yeah. I said, it's a different ball game when you yeah. do that and yeah. you're gonna go on the moon with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now you've had some uh, famous uh, customers over the, over the years with your, your, not just the movie cars, but you built cars for movie stars as well. So do you have a, a favorite or any great stories? Uh, you, I mean, you mentioned Frank Sinatra already, but. Everyone was a story like, uh, Fr Frank Sinatra comes in and he says, uh, George, I want you to black out all my windows. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. And it goes, but blacking out all the windows, he couldn't see it. He comes in the next morning, I couldn't see an infant thing left, right, George? <laughs> and then uh, John Wayne, he comes in and he says, I don't want to have to stoop over to get in my motor car. You know, they talk to me like that. It's like we were like all like a family. And I say, okay, don't worry about it, Duke. He, he goes back, I come over and I. Take the, uh, raise the raise the roof and lower the seats and everything comes back and I hey hey Duke, come on get over I got the I got your car ready your motor car's ready he comes over and gets in there and he says hey George this is great I don't have to stoop over to get in my motor car you know? <laughs> I mean when we worked with the celebrities and people the uh, they they lived our lives I mean I I enjoyed the way they talk they enjoyed what I would do yeah. and uh, what. Not only me, many other good, good customizers. Yep. Yeah. And you, you did something for Elvis as well. I heard so, um, someone was interviewing you yesterday, and I'm pretty sure I heard them mention Elvis in the conversation. Uh, Elvis, to me, was of all the celebrities, he was the best. He was kind, nice, and easy with everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody was that could overdo him. He would be on the same level with you, with him, anybody. Elvis was the kindest, wonderful young man that was talented. When he come in and I'm working on his Cadillac limousine and doing work on it, he'd come into the shop to inspect the car. He'd go first into the shop, talk to all my men, and he'd take pictures and do things, and then he'd come over and talk to me. Yeah. He was that kind of a man, and each man was different. They were all considered Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all, all these different celebrities. And then from there, went into the movies. I'm making movies and TV shows into the, the world of what I knew what was happening, and uh, to get the vision of what 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 happens when you're going down the street and uh, you got quad lights on and they come on and off and different things like that taillights that you can push and the taillights will go right and left. I, I have LED lights going down the side of the doors so that a guy on the freeway is driving alongside you and you want to make a, a left turn, they, they couldn't see the signals going up here, yeah. but coming down the door, yeah. they yeah. could see it then, oh, you're going to make a left turn, I better warn you, beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep, don't do that, I'm yeah. over here. Yeah. And that's so. that's another feature that's now on, on every modern car, yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now. One of my uh, uh, friends asked me, I, I want to get some of the dirt on, on George, not not you know anything too bad, but the stories about uh, like building a, a show car and then you know two days before the show you've you've dropped the the fender in the in the dirt and you've wrecked the paint or you've you you know, you, you you put the the welding torch across the paint uh, you know and you had a car a car to get to a car show in a couple of days. Were there ever any last minute disasters with the Hirohata Mercury or or some of those other famous cars? Well. In many of those cars, we were prepared to, to if anybody from the studio 
in the prop departments would move a project, we wouldn't get them off of that if we felt that they couldn't handle it. It was hard because the unions that they had working the studio says, no, you can't, you, you can't get a guy to just do a, a, a metal man to, to do move that car. We're doing a, a, a film shoot and he's got to have a certain permit. Da, 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 da. So we got to be able to be in, in and back and forth and come in with our people to be as assistant along the way to make sure that they don't do damages to the car. If they want to do a quick accelerate, pop the wheel and make it spin around and go down, we had to do all of that for them, yeah. or their stuntman for that, or the star to do that. Yeah. 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 Oh, all right, and uh, so what's uh, what's next on the chopping block? Have you got any cars, uh, new cars that you'll be building? It's too busy going to car shows and chatting to people like us. <laughs> well, the big thrill we're having now is that you can take, it's not creating a car like we did in the old days, chopping the top and blah, 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 blah. Now, today, we have your, your, your designers in the, in the motor car companies, we're competing worldwide. You're into China, you're into Japan, you're into uh, to Greece, you're into many different places. Now, they don't have restrictions. They can do what they want to do, and boom, you're stuck. You say, wait a minute. I mean, I'd like to be able to build that windshield the way I want it. Well, the permit department's here. I said, no, you don't, George. You've got to have it this way, da, da, da. I said, well, how come over in, in, in Italy, they just whack away at it and don't even do any frames or nothing? Yeah. Well, they can do whatever they want, but you, you got to do it this way. We'll go along with it. Whatever it takes to, to do it the right way, all I want to be able to do is create the design that's appealing and follows through so that the car is uh, uh, sellable, uh, permittable, and enjoyed by the person that wants to buy it. Yeah. Some guys would say, well, I, I like that fender. I like the way you, you did some props on that, and you did that and you put dips on that. And you go to another guy and say, I don't like that. I want you to come over and flow it. So you have to live with who and what, where and when. Yeah. Well, that's the thing these days, as you mentioned earlier, we, we've struggled with uh, making uh, cars legal. You know, they're, they're quite strict on that stuff and, and dealing with the bureaucracy and the officialdom. And yeah, now it, it seems to have uh, taken over the USA a bit as well, where they're worried about everyone else's safety, I guess, aren't they? Yeah, well, it was at first uh, when they we first started putting quad taillights and quad headlights in the old car. We'd be driving down the freeway and the cops says, how come you got, you know, four headlights? I said, yeah, what's wrong with that? He says, that's illegal. I said, well, how do you know they're illegal? Well, where'd you get them? I said, I got them off my tractor. <laughs> oh, well, I guess you're all right because that tractor is legal. So you can run it. In some places, yes, and some places, no. It depends on the officer, who he is and when. And, yeah. and we used to do so, so many things. I mean, we would, like when I, I put on my show in Culver City. Yeah. And Culver City was a city where we would meet in the streets and challenge to go drag race up on the hill. <laughs> that means you get over there and get everybody all excited. And boom, 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 we get these two guys all excited about drag racing. But when they drag raced, they drag race for pink slips. Yeah. That means if they lose, they lose their car. Yeah. Yeah. And here they are down at the front down there. We go up the, up the hill a little ways and we put the cars all out and turn on the music and got all the girls out there swing dancing and we're getting everything. And two guys, boom, they're off and running. They're going like crazy coming up the hill and everything. And we're down there swinging and got the music going. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, six sets of red lights are coming up the other way. Here comes the cops. <laughs> and these guys are going to Oh, we had so many, so many wonderful, fun things to do yeah. that was safe and enjoyable and, and tractable for people. And I don't care if it was the women, the guys, uh, some, uh, I mean, there's some girls that were tremendous drivers and, and, and even went into shaping metal. And they, they, it was, it was a, an enjoyable world to be able to do what you want, when you want, and how you want, and, and, and keep it legal and make it safe. And, 
yeah. and uh, do these many uh, fun things. Yeah. Oh well, I think uh, the, the the good old days are still still with us. Uh, you know, there's still some fantastic things de being done. And um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dale. I'm glad that you got the chance to, to meet a, a legend. And um, we've both got a, a book, Barris Customs of the Fifties, that we'd like you to sign. So if you can do that, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>